Hello and welcome back. In this video, I am going to introduce you to another important concept in Excel formulas and functions that is structured references. In simple words, we will learn about Excel tables and how they are useful in Excel formulas and functions. We will start with the introduction of Excel tables. Let's first cover what is an Excel table and how to create it, then followed by difference between normal range and a structured range. Next we will see the naming syntax in structured references and how to use them in Excel formulas. We will learn about the table name and column name format, few special references on rows, columns, headers and entire table reference. And then we will touch base upon advantages of structured range in Excel formulas specifically when you add and remove the data. Lastly, we will learn about most important concept of making these structured references as absolute. By default, they are relative in nature, so it's important that we learn how to make them absolute. An Excel table is a structured way of organizing the data within the Excel spreadsheet, allowing for easier filtering, sorting and do some advanced calculations. It is very easy to create an Excel table. Just select the range or even you can click on one single cell within the range if the data is really huge. Then go to the insert tab and then click on table option. You can also use Ctrl plus T shortcut key. Once this create table option shows up, you will notice that Excel is smart enough to select the required data even though we have selected only one cell within the range. Now here in the create table options, just make sure the option of my table as headers is enabled and then click OK to create the Excel table. We can visually notice that this data appears more structured than the normal data. After creating an Excel table, when we click on any cell inside this range, we see a dedicated tab on the top by name Table Design. All the options that we see under this tab are unique features exclusively meant for Excel tables. On the left side, we see there is a name assigned to this table we have created. And we can see the same name under the name box drop down. And obviously, when we select this name, it will select the entire Excel table. So basically, this is an extension of named ranges that we have seen in the previous video. We can change the name of this table as per our requirement and giving a sensible name always helps in identifying the correct data set. Down below the table name, we can use the option of resize data and then adjust the table range as per our requirement. We also have the options like remove duplicates and we can also use convert to range option to remove the table formatting. Most of the other options that are available under this tab are basically meant for some simple formatting. But the most important feature here is Insert Slicer. This is basically a type of filter that we can apply on Excel tables. And when we use this option, it will basically show the names of headers which we can use for the filtering of data. Let me select the items here and then click on OK to insert the slicer. It basically displays the unique list of different values under the items header and we can click on each of these values to dynamically filter this table. Let me delete this slicer and now we will see the important feature of Excel table which is very helpful while creating the Excel formulas and that is the ease of selecting the data. For example, I will go to the data which is not in table format and I want to select all the values under January to use them in any Excel formulas. Right now, the data is not that huge and you can directly drag and select all the values. Imagine you have millions of rows of data and even there are some empty cells in between. In such a situation, neither you can drag all the rows to select them nor you can use the shortcut keys because of empty cells in between. But in case of tables, when you take your mouse cursor on January header, you will notice the mouse cursor changes into black arrow mark which is upside down. When this arrow mark is active and if you click on the header value, it will select all the data below that header. If you move this arrow to the column alphabet on the top, which is J in this case, it will select the entire column. The same thing if you try on the normal data range, you will get the same arrow mark to select the entire column, but not to select the data below the header. This small feature in Excel table can be a game changer when creating the Excel formulas. You can also bring your mouse cursor to the top left corner and you will notice now this arrow changes into 45 degree inclination. And if you click on that particular header now, it will select the entire data below each headers. 
So these were the very small features in Excel table, but very useful while creating the Excel formulas. The naming syntax in Excel tables are pretty simple. You have to remember few special symbols like at the rate, hashtag and square brackets. Say for example, you want to multiply the row values under January by number 10. Let me start by adding the equal to symbol and now I request your attention here. If you select the same row under the January, you will see the Excel formula will reference that row with the table name and also the column name with add the rate symbol in front of it. This is how each row is referenced in Excel tables. But if you select any other row apart from the row where you are entering the formula, you will get the normal cell references of that row as an input to this formula. So when we say structured references in Excel tables, it is very important that we maintain the references in respective rows and columns while using them in Excel formulas. Now let me select the second row because I am entering the formula in second row here. Multiply that value by 10 and hit enter to get the result. Let's drag this formula to all the rows and you will see the formula remains same for all the rows. And the reason is quite obvious. The structured reference formula which is at the rate symbol and the header name will always reference to the corresponding column and the row value in the formula. I hope it is clear. Now let's say we want to find the summation of January month. Let's add the sum formula here and then select all the values under January header. And you will see now the reference uses two square brackets with the column name in between. This is the structured reference style to reference the entire column values. Let's close the bracket and hit enter to get the summation of all the values. Now say for example, you want to find the summation of all the values in this table. Let's add another sum formula and then drag and select all the values in this table including the headers. You will see now the excel formula will automatically add new reference as hashtag all keyword. This is the structured reference style to reference all the values within the given table. Close the bracket and hit enter to get the summation of all the values. Now as a final example, let's count the number of headers in this table. Let me add count a formula which is basically used to count non-blank cells in the excel data and then select all header values as the input. You will see now the formula reference gets updated as hashtag headers. This is the structured reference style to reference all the headers in a given table. Close the bracket and hit enter. You will get the count of headers as 5. So remember, at the rate is used for row reference, square brackets for column reference, hashtag all to reference entire data, hashtag headers to reference all the headers in a given table. The one major advantage of using excel tables is that they are highly dynamic in nature. They can accommodate any new addition of rows or columns into its table range and also in any excel formulas. Say for example, we have calculated the summation values at the bottom of January month and also for all the values in this table. Now let me add another row at the bottom with some random values and you will see the summation value at that particular column will automatically change its value. If I add another column with some values, excel tables are smart enough to identify the header names if it is in sequential pattern and the moment we enter all the data, the summation of all the values will automatically get updated. This entire dynamic nature of excel table makes excel formulas highly flexible enough and you can reduce the errors significantly. Last but not the least, we will see how to make structured references as absolute while using them in excel formulas. By default, the excel structured references are relative in nature and there is a small trick to make them absolute. In this example, I have formatted this data into two different tables and assigned the custom names as transactions and total. Now let's say I want to find the summation of these five items transactions for the month of January. I will start adding this sum if formula. Again, don't worry about these formulas. We are going to learn them in upcoming videos. The first argument is the criteria range and we will reference the entire items column in the transaction table. The criteria here will be apple and the summation range will be all the data below the January month. Close the bracket and hit enter. It will automatically calculate the summation values for all the items for the month of January. Now, if we select all these formulas, 
and drag it over February, March and April months, we will see the output is not as expected and we will get many zero values. If we click on the formula for February month, we will notice the criteria range is shifted to January month while it must stick to the items column in transaction table. The criteria has shifted to the values under January column while it must stick to the values below the items column. And the summation range is referencing to February month which is as per our requirement. So the only thing is we need to fix the criteria range and the criteria for same column and same rows. So to achieve this, let's go to January month formula again and here we will copy the items column reference and paste it one more time just after the existing reference and then separate both the references with the colon in between. Finally, enclose both the references with another pair of square bracket. If you observe carefully, I am just trying to create a column reference similar to normal range references in Excel. Now, if we do the similar changes to row reference, the only difference is we must add add the rate symbol outside the square bracket and then finally enclose everything in another pair of square brackets. Now, if we hit enter and then drag this formula to all cells, we will get the accurate results. I know it is a bit confusing and I am not sure even Microsoft really intended this trick to work this way, but it works perfectly. So feel free to pause this video and then understand the structured references in Excel formulas. I am sure you will definitely understand the trick behind. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video.